Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is Salim Akhtar Malik, your host at the Observation Post channel. On this channel, I discuss with you issues of national and international importance, defense and security matters, as well as important events from military history. You can interact with me on your on my channel by giving your views and uh, comments. And you can also connect with me on Twitter at my Twitter address, which is at Salim Akhtar 53. Your comments and views help me in fine tuning my talks, which I deliver to you from time to time on this channel. In this session, I'll be talking to you about carrying out reorientation of Pakistan's economy. According to the changing situation and changing realities on ground, for how many times do we have to remind ourselves that during the 1960s, Pakistan's economy was the fastest growing economy in the whole of Asia, Africa, and Latin America. The South Koreans had borrowed our first and second five-year plans in order to orient their economy and base their economy on the guidelines given uh, in our uh, five-year plans. During that time, Pakistan had also advanced a loan of $25 million to West Germany. It was a 20-year long-term loan, which we had advanced to West Germany. And at, pre at the present exchange rates, it comes to about $300 million. Our economy then was based on manufacturing, where a large number of industrial plants and factories were being established. Our agriculture was based on crops like cotton, which earned us the major portion of our foreign exchange. Now, cotton is a crop which feeds a large number of downstream industries, particularly the textile industry. And textile industry is one industry which generates the largest number of jobs. So Pakistan was not only one of the top exporters of raw cotton, but also a producer and exporter of textiles. We were not dependent upon rollouts from the Gulf states and from other countries. Although we were dependent upon loans from uh, IMF, but those loans were mainly used for creating the infrastructure for our industry and agriculture. During the 1960s, Pakistan had concluded the Indus River Basin Treaty with India under the auspices of, of the World Bank. And according to that treaty, Pakistan had to cede three eastern rivers, that is Ravi, Satluj, and Bihar to India. And in order to then make do with the three western rivers which were left with Pakistan, that is Indus, Jhelum, and Chenab, we had to restructure our irrigation system for which we were, plant, we were granted loan by the IMF 
for construction of a large number of canals which would transfer the water from and between the western rivers create a number of dams as well as other types of water reservoirs so this is how we utilized the loans the foreign loans this changed as a result of the 1965 war and uh, soon thereafter there was a 71 war which was a choreographed war as i look back we find that it was planned by bhutto to destroy pakistan after assuming power bhutto destroyed pakistani industry that is indigenous industry that is local industry with a vengeance because the industries were low, were owned by big businesses and those big businesses had opposed bhutto during the 1970 elections bhutto also introduced agricultural reforms but those reforms as compared with the reforms currently carried out earlier by ayub khan were a hoax because whereas there was a limit on agricultural land the forest land which constituted major land holdings by the feudals the forest lands were exempted from agricultural reforms and this and thus the landlords and the large scale agricultural land holders did not concede by much uh, as a result of those agricultural reforms so bhutto not only destroyed the industry by nationalizing it but also destroyed the agriculture firstly he nationalized factories in the first stage he nationalized the large scale industries and thereafter even small industrial plants like cotton ginning factories and uh, the atta milling factories now nationalization was another name given to transferring the administration of these industrial plants to corrupt and inefficient bureaucracy soon the plants majority of the plants were shut down and what remained were hulks of the earlier plants likewise bhutto and after him the sharifs they destroyed pakistan's agriculture by shifting the emphasis on cotton growing on uh, on to sugar cane growing now sugar cane is a crop which is very water intensive and it can only be produced for, for the production of sugar unlike unlike the textile industry which generates a number of downstream uh, unlike the cotton production which generates a large number of downstream industries like the textile industry like the garment industry like uh, weaving industry etc the sugar cane crop only generates one industry and that is production of sugar and soon there were sugar mills sprouting up all over the country 
and these sugar mills were owned by various politicians and civil and military bureaucrats so pakistan's share in the world production of cotton was almost halved and it destroyed not only the textile industry but also rendered hundreds of thousands of workers jobless bhutto was followed by the musical chairs between people's party under benazir bhutto and the sharifs and during this time also the industrial sector sector was neglected because these people particularly the sharifs had established their factory, their industrial plants and they have all they had also transferred their industries abroad they had established steel plants and other factories in saudi arabia and other countries outside pakistan whatever was there in the shape of large industrial holdings were privatized and uh, the plants were shut down and were the lands were converted into housing colonies what we need now is the need to reorientate our economy which is presently based on or dependent upon heavy dependent heavily upon the foreign remittances by the pakistanis working abroad this trend was started by bhutto when he had destroyed the industry as well as agriculture in order to compensate for the loss suffered by the economy he cultivated friendships with the foreign rulers particularly the arab sheikhs and he sent a large number of pakistanis to the gulf states pakistanis were there working in the united states and the european union countries during the time of ayub khan also but very few pakistanis had gone to the gulf states there were pakistanis working in kuwait and saudi arabia but the united arab emirates did not exist a united arab emirates was formed or gained independence from britain in 1971 prior to that united arab emirates was part of the crucial states which were governed and ruled by the british so during bhutto's time a large number of pakistanis were sent to work in saudi arabia and united arab emirates there were a large number of pakistanis also all, already there in kuwait and they together had been sending large amounts of foreign exchange to run pakistan's ailing economy presently according to the 2018 and 2019 estimates there are 2.6 million pakistanis working in saudi arabia 1.5 million in the united arab emirates 1.1 million in kuwait a little more than 1 lakh in qatar and the same number in bahrain that is a little more than 1 lakh and together they send almost 10 billion dollars annually to pakistan they remit 10 billion dollars to pakistan the total remittances sent by the pakistanis working abroad 
whose number is around 7.3 million 7.3 million Pakistanis work abroad out of which there are 4 million Pakistanis working in the Gulf states and the total remittances sent by the Pakistanis working abroad are 20 billion dollars annually out of which half the amount that is 10 billion dollars are sent by Pakistanis working in the Gulf states. Now there are limitations and there are drawbacks in the remittances. We, we earn foreign exchange but then we have limitations because these Pakistanis, our brethren, are not treated uh, much above that status of uh, home servants or house servants. They are ill-treated. They are uh, shunted out at will and may, for may, many months uh, at a stretch, their salaries are stopped. And after a lot of haggling, they are paid. So if Pakistan wants to restructure its economy on modern lines, and uh, if we want to live like a nation with self-respect, we'll have to restructure our economy from one, one based on foreign remittances to manufacturing and uh, agricultural, that is value-added agricultural products. And this is a procedure or a process which is a long-term process and which may take almost a decade if we start to work on it today. I have been prompted to air this video after hearing a news item that during the recent visit by our Prime Minister to Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia promised to provide us millions of jobs. And we always talk about millions of jobs. So I was worried that the Pakistanis who are working in large number in the Gulf countries are still, are already facing difficulties. And what if we, instead of restructuring our economy away from the one based on foreign remittances, if we decide to pace our economy away from the one based on foreign remittances, we'll have to look the other way and we'll have to reduce or remove altogether our dependence on foreign remittances. This is all I wanted to say in this video. See, in the, see you in the next video, video with a new topic. Till then, bye-bye.